In the next few lessons we're going to look at electrolysis. Now electrolysis involves passing an electric current through an ionic substance and when this happens the substance is broken down into new substances. So here we have an ionic substance. This might for example be a salt or a metal oxide and you'll see that it consists of ions positive and negative ions held together in what we call an ionic lattice. So we've got the positive ions are called cations and the negative ions are called anions. That's negative and that's positive. And at the moment in the solid state this substance is unable to conduct electricity because the ions are held together in the ionic lattice by strong forces and so they're not free to move where they want. Now in order to be able to achieve this we have to change the solid substance into what we call an electrolyte and an electrolyte is a liquid which is able to conduct electricity. And we can do this in one of two ways. The first way is to heat the salt or the oxide until it melts. We say that it is in its fused state Okay, so we've done that, so we have now got an electrolyte, that's the salt in its fused state, we call it fused, and you'll notice now that the ions are separated. There are positive and negative free ions which are free to move between the electrodes. So looking at the battery here we can see that this is the negative electrode and this is the positive electrode, and what will happen is that the cations, that's the positive ions, will be attracted to the negative electrode. Let's draw that. Okay, so cations attracted to the negative electrode, therefore the negative electrode is called the cathode. Okay, remember that cations go to the cathode. That's the negative electron. Likewise, the negative ions, which are the anions, they will be attracted to the positive electrode. There, like that and so the anions are attracted to the anode. And this is called the anode. This is vocabulary that you need to get familiar with. Okay, Cation positive ion, anion negative ion, cathode is the negative electrode, anode the positive electrode. Now I'm not going to go into what happens at each of these electrodes yet. I just want to familiarize you with this vocabulary but what we need to mention here is the other type of electrolytes. So one of the ways is to melt the salt or the oxide so that it's in its fused state. That creates free ions which can move and conduct electricity. The other way of doing that is to dissolve the salt in water. Remember that water is a polar molecule and that means it can filter in to ionic lattices like this and break the lattice up. So you can use water to break it up in a sense instead of heat. Okay, so when that happens we have something like this. So instead of having the fused salt, the salt is now in solution. It's dissolved in water. So we have here an aqueous solution. That's to say the ions are dissolved in water and they are now free to move between the electrodes. Now, just as before we have the the negative and positive terminal of the battery. You ought to remember the, the short fat stubby symbol here is the negative terminal so this becomes the negative and this is the positive as before. That's the cathode and that's the anode. And we'll go into the details of what happens in this situation in lesson three. In lesson two we'll deal with this setup. I'd just like to say this now that this is slightly more complicated than this situation because here you've only got two ions present. The negative anion from the salt and the positive cation from the salt. Whereas here not only do you have the salt ions present but you will also have ions present because water itself becomes ionized in this situation. So we will have the water molecule ionizing into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. So we're going to have additional ions present in this solution which will complicate things. Okay, like that. 
So this complicates life, but we will look at this in detail when we look at the electrolysis of aqueous solutions in lesson three.